Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Jose Gastambide, clinical psychologist, and I'd like to talk to you today about how to take the temperature of our feelings. This is called, quite simply, a feeling thermometer. The more technical term is the subjective units of distress, or SUDS for short. Now you might be asking yourself, but why do I want to rate my feelings on a scale from 0 to 10 or perhaps 0 to 100? Well, I'll tell you. Sometimes when we become angry, we only notice the moment in which we feel our anger at its highest, but we don't notice all the different steps along the way in which our anger was rising. We notice it when it's up here. We don't notice when it's here or here, when it's rising at a different level of intensity. Similarly, we're very good at noticing when we're feeling overwhelmed. We're good at noticing when we're feeling overwhelmed, when we're feeling our stress level up to about here. We sometimes don't notice it when our stress or anxiety level is over here, when it's rising. We don't notice it when it reaches perhaps the point of no return, the point beyond which we can become overwhelmed and tap out. So, what is a good way to be able to catch ourselves when we are beginning to get angry or beginning to get upset or beginning to get overwhelmed? It's simple. The way that we do this, the way that we train people to do this, is by slowly but surely noticing what different points on that scale may be. For example, I'd like you to take a moment and imagine over around here on the my left side, your right side of the screen, a literal scale ranging from zero at the bottom to 10. With this scale in mind, I'd like you to recall a moment when you felt comfortable, happy, perhaps calm and fine. Take a moment to place yourself on this scale. Simple enough, right? Most of you, when you thought of a moment when you felt calm or relaxed or at peace, you probably felt yourself somewhere between a zero or one, perhaps, maybe a two. Let's take a moment to remember a moment or a situation in our lives in which we felt really overwhelmed. Take a moment, think about it. Not that difficult, huh? Most of you probably landed somewhere between a 8, 9, or a 10, perhaps. Now let's recall an event or a situation in our lives where we felt stressed, or we felt anxious, where we may have even felt irritated, but we were able to handle it. We felt like, you know, this is, this is annoying, this is painful, but I'm going to be okay. Just take a moment. Now, for many of you, you perhaps found yourself reading that memory or that situation somewhere between maybe a four to a six, right? In some high cases, maybe a seven, right? So that you were in a situation where you felt a certain level of stress, but not so much that you became overwhelmed and not too little that it was virtually imperceptible. Good. Now, Having identified what a low level of stress might look like, a moderate level and a high level, let's think now to situations in our day-to-day -day lives. Imagine a moment when you felt upset in your life, but then you did something. You did something to cope with that situation, something that you found helped you. For some people, it might be listening to music, watching a movie, talking to a friend, something that you notice helped you calm down. I want you to remember that moment. I want you to put yourself back in that situation and think, well, how distressed did I feel when I engaged in that pleasurable activity? Take a moment. Ready? Good. Now, some of you may have noticed perhaps a two, maybe a three point reduction in your level of distress when you engaged in that activity. You may have thought about it and noticed, hmm, you know, that, that made me feel better, made me feel a little good, right? We know abstractly that it made us feel good, but we often don't quantify how strongly did that help us. 
some things maybe help us a little bit, maybe reduce our level of stress by a couple of points. Other things we might notice actually help us out a lot and help us bring down our level of distress substantially, almost to zero. Part of what we want to begin doing is noticing what are those things that incrementally begin to increase our level of distress, but also what kind of things do we notice reduce our level of distress and by how much? What kind of things do we notice are really helpful and very useful in managing our feelings when we're overwhelmed or angry or sad or, or, or anxious? What I'd like you to begin doing, especially as we move forward to reviewing other exercise, I'd like you to give yourself a little piece of homework for the next week. I'd like you to take some time at least once a day to pause and check in with yourself. What's my level of distress right now? Is it a one, meaning not very much distress? Is it a five, moderate, a little high, it's uncomfortable, but I can still handle it? Or is it much higher? Is it a level of distress that's so uncomfortable that it's actually painful? Ideally, write it down. In fact, you could use the handy dandy little handout that I have linked in to the bottom of this page. You can use this handout to track on a day-to-day -day basis, moment-to-moment -moment basis, what was my subjective level of distress? What made me upset? What helped me calm down? I'd like you to try this out for at least a week. Because in other exercises that we're going to cover, we're going to be doing this uh, scale at the beginning of the exercise and then at the end. So that you can notice on a skill by skill basis, video by video, which of these things help you. Which of these things help you feel a little better, help you cope a little better. Okay, so let's keep walking on this journey together. Let's see if we can get you a little bit of help even just through this uh, online context. Okay, so thank you for your time. I hope this is useful to you. Take care.